Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad today with what is probably going to be a uh, fantastic failure. As you can see already our upper stage wobbling around every time we uh, come in and out of time warp as I tried to line up with the moon but got interrupted by Kerbal Alarm Clock and now we are sitting precariously at an angle and shifted off to the side just a little bit. Uh, I do not foresee this going well but I had it built I tried best as I could to uh, make this thing structurally sound and uh, flight worthy uh, much like our test flight kind of went but I don't know how well it's gonna go but we're gonna give it a try anyway we have a very limited window uh, this is the heavy resupply module bound for Harmonia station in orbit of Mars um, and hope it contains with it all the supplies a crew of three would need for a five-year on-post mission, I think. But I would like to get it out to the station ahead of the next crew to go out there within this Mars window, but we've got a lot going on. We're also at a Jupiter window, or at least we will be in a couple of days, and um, one of our deep spacecraft is arriving at its target. So we really do have to hurry, so I'm not going to wait much for this relative inclination. I'm going to try to correct some of it in flight. Let's get this show on the road. That looks like a good light. Let's get those clamps off and see if we can't... Yeah. I... Whoa, buddy. Okay. Yeah, already this is not very good. Uh, the best we can hope for is it doesn't tear itself apart so we're just going to try to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere as quickly as we can and then we'll make our gravity turn hopefully it won't be uh all that aggressive but uh we're we're just going to kind of go for an off-plane transfer i think we have the delta v to spare and so really the best we can do is just shoot for it So, for the record, it really was kind of against my better judgment uh, to even try to fly this mission, but I already had it built, I already had it paid for, and I was really just kind of hoping that uh, all of the work that I put into this thing, trying to get some stability and turning auto struts on and adding more independent struts would really just kind of help stabilize the platform. Um, unfortunately, it, well, I mean, it mostly worked, I guess. It's still... Uh, highly unpredictable and not very easy to fly and I think some of the uh, launch clamps have their pumps turned on and some of them do not. Um, that's probably a copy error on my part but just something I missed all the way up until now. So the fueling on all the boosters is uneven. Uh, the platform itself is highly unstable. Um, I just don't think I can keep this kind of aesthetic. There's other boosters set up course they flamed out at different times that made things different anyway I don't think I can keep the aesthetic of this rocket and make it a functional platform which does kind of make me sad but uh, that's also why I have been pursuing uh, other methods or other launch vehicles that will hopefully have a similar kind of tonnage to orbit as this thing um, not even similar tonnage to orbit, similar deliverable payloads to Mars, I guess, is more accurate, because this thing will easily do 500 tons to orbit, but I don't have anything else that will even come close to that kind of capacity, unfortunately. But uh, it was kind of a difficult flight. I didn't really have a chance to step away, or, I mean, not step away. I didn't have a chance to really relax. This was... Uh, kind of intensive and a lot of just very nitpicking even the slightest adjustment to the heading resulted in this the uh, boogie noodle uh, just jiving its way all the way to orbit sort of which made trying to keep things on heading and adjusting for that relative inclination extraordinarily difficult um, this is not even like the micromanaging of the Cherukin levels of irritating this is just disruptively bad and not a good time on any given front whatsoever but uh, we're coming up here on our main engine cutoff and which hopefully things will get a whole lot better so here's old me oh thank god that's over 
we're on to the HT3 upper stage. Uh, it looks like the wet noodle portion of our flight is concluded. And we have successfully delivered the payload to space. Let's just see if we can successfully deliver it to orbit. Uh, not that much further to go on just uh, rounding things out and trying to get rid of some more of this relative inclination while we can. Uh, but I think we do have the Delta V to spare. So, fingers crossed, everybody. So far, uh, it's as well as could be expected, I suppose. So, the upper stage is a lot more manageable. It flies a lot more predictably. It doesn't have that wiggle problem uh, between its uh, fairing plate and the payload itself, like the core stage has. So that's probably just uh, because it's not connected through an engine bell down there. I think that has a lot to do with stability, actually. But anyway, we're coming up on end of burn, so here's old me. All right, 286 by 155, we're just going to call it good enough there. We've got uh, 4.9 kilometers per second left in the tank. Not bad. So, uh, a bloody miracle we made it this far at all, to be very honest. But, yeah, so far, so good, I guess. Set as target. All right, and let's bring up MechJab uh, Maneuver Planner for our uh, Mars Transfer Burn Computing. Ding. All right, ASAP. All right, any time now, 3.6, create node. Really? Uh, what are you doing here, MechJub? Create node. What seemed stupid moon? Yeah, the moon is going to deflect us for a bit. So let's. Oh, uh, can we? Yeah, if we skip an orbit, we still hit the moon. <sighs> skip another orbit. Skip another orbit. There we go. So now five hours from now, and bang, that'll take us to Mars. Let's focus view, see if we can't tune this in a bit. Yeah, tune this in a lot a bit, perhaps. All right, where's our station? Amidst all of these other things. Uh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I guess being so off-axis isn't going to help me out a whole lot, so we're just going to have to get close and then correct later. So, five hours to burn. We can get rid of you now. Let's uh, go ahead and make a couple of passes. Epilepsy warning. Whoa! Wow, that went by fast. Okay, so we're going to give this node another... Uh, orbit because yeah we're halfway around the planet again good job good job 45 minutes everything's going according to plan today let's make sure we're still actually gonna hit Mars yes good enough for me It says down here the burn will take eight minutes. That can't be true because we can displace everything we have in six. And this is going to leave uh, more than a kilometer per second left in the tanks. Provided, of course, we haven't lost that much to boil off. So I'm going to give it about three minutes of lead time. That would be now. Let's get angled in. Yeah, slowly but surely. Wow, I should have given this significantly more lead time. We are, in fact, very heavy. So let's bring the RCS of the payload into play. That's yeah, better. Now we're starting to make some uh, correction. There it is. Start to ullage. We have one ignition. We cannot screw this up. Very stable, good. 
Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Insufficient resources to ignite. Not even vapor in the feed lines. Yeah, yeah, that was our last ignition. Well, that is certainly new and interesting. No connection. Why the hell don't I have our... Did we lose battery? Bet you we did. Battery's dead. Well. That's a scrubbed flight. Insufficient resources to ignite. Huh. <laughs> well. Good times. Good times. Well. On to the next thing then and here is the next thing uh this is the much famed kentucky kev he has just uh made his transfer into neptune's soi uh this little guy has been on mission for 16 years now which is uh pretty awesome in the uh the grand scale of things um he did a flyby of jupiter that was his original mission was to uh explore the moons of jupiter uh, we lucked into a flyby of Neptune, which has resulted in this telemetry. And with a 58.6 meter per second correction, we're actually going to have a close... Well, we had a close encounter with Earth. I don't know what happened. I just dialed the node in a while ago. Uh, let me focus view here and see if I can't correct this out a little bit, because it really... Like, it was pretty minor, but it was there. So give me just a second or two of tinkering. There it is. There's an encounter with Earth. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to try to make this happen. Uh, I don't know about recovery of this poor little guy. He's going to be coming in not only retrograde, but extraordinarily fast. And of course, I just ruined it. Uh, do not tinker with the node that far in advance. Easily. Okay, it shouldn't take that much, but we get the idea. And I guess I can tune it uh, a little later, because we, uh, we've got some science to collect, he says, as he continues to tinker with the node. Uh, it would be just really neat if one of the farthest flung objects from our solar system has a chance to come back home. Um, we might be able to figure out how to arrest him uh, and actually return him to Earth uh, at some point. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's so far in the future, I think, right now, that maybe we can't quite tune for... Oh, come on. Yes, there. We're going to leave it at that. 57.2 meters per second in 127 days. That's going to be at our Neptune periapsis. But while we're here, radio in. Uh, I really hope all of your equipment still works. The dish is pointed in the correct direction. It will take uh, four and a half hours. For this signal to get to uh, to the spacecraft and then back so we'll just utilize some time warp as we start to fall uh, ever closer to the gas giant Neptune uh, we do not have a flyby of the uh, moon of Triton but uh, we do have another spacecraft en route that does have one planted it will just be a couple hundred days before it gets there Atmospheric pressure scan while in space high over Neptune. 90 science for, n like, nothing. Oh, man, come out of time warp. We are just wasting time. We've got some other launches for our Mars window to get to. They're rolling out to the launch pad. It'll take a couple of days, but we do have to do this stuff. I didn't even see if that tracked or if that gave us credit. So we're going to bring this up. All right. Magnetometer scan, 75 science. No, we're just, we're not... We're just not going to radio things in anymore. We're not even going to try. Oh, good. 
hang on to that one. Let's just, yeah. Uh, it's not even attempting to radio things in. That's, that's awesome. So what I'm going to do is transfer some science around. Uh, oh, no. The one-ton satellite bus can't have science transferred to it. That's fantastic. Even better. F5, we're gonna, just going to do a quick load and see if that doesn't help, maybe. F5, did that work? I need to start paying attention. Quick saving. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, it's going to take years for everything to radio in. Let's just try maybe... Yeah, another four hours, no big deal. We've got something already rolling out to the launch pad, so I guess we're actually not wasting that much time. You know, eight hours here or there. But I really, really, really want to get credit for this stuff. Uh, I think I have a contract to fly by Neptune and radio science in, and this would uh, be kind of problematic. Good, time computer has throttled back time warp. 30 seconds or so to go. Okay, this is taking entirely too long. Why did you do this to me? Good. <laughs> Great, we can't... Yeah, we'll reset that one. Uh, come out of time warp. Transmit. Uploading. Data receive. Yes. 90 science for orbital uh, and everything else has science already in it because we saved the data. Review data. Great. We'll just uh, run around and do this one by one. Review. Review. That's all we got. That's, uh, yeah, fairly light scientific loadout on this one. No big deal. And so let me just bring up flight computer, make sure all of those commands went through. Yes, four more hours. No big deal. <laughs> all right, transmit 135 science. Uploading, science added, perfect. That's one. There we go, another 90 science for us. 90 science added, fantastic. Another 75 science received, fantastic. Another 90 science, bingo. Another 90 science. All right, 67.5 for the telemetry scan. Bingo. And that's that. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> well, I don't think we can actually see Neptune from where we are, but uh, I'm going to set up flight computer. Uh, 127 days, 7 hours. We do want to get low science uh, as best we can. So 127 day. I really should not be doing this. 07 hour, 32 mic. And now it's 31 mic. We're just going to say 30 mic. Enter. And I'm going to go around and start uh, logging the science. Log, log, all right, let's get uh, analyzed telemetry in there, log magnetometer, and I need to make sure all five of these register, log, yep, log, yep, log, yep. 
record. Yep. Record. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's all set up and ready to go. Let's delete all of this and reset our counter back to zero. So we can do this uh, a little more uh, on the fly, I guess. And we're going to have to bring out Kerbal Alarm Clock add ourselves an alarm, add our periapsis. Uh, I'm going to give us a margin of five hours and one minute at alarm. So I want to make sure we have time to also manually de deliver the radio in controls just in case, but we've got uh, 127 days of falling. Wow, that is very impressive. <laughs> that is a oh, huge gravity well. And evidence of this is our absolutely massive change in telemetry look how much i have to zoom out to <laughs> based on our current course and what i mean we we're coming out of the solar system we slingshot it off of jupiter like down here somewhere and we we're going to leave the solar system quite easily and now we're going to come well within earth's orbit we're basically just going to undo all of the gravity assisting through gravity assists and uh try to bring them at least close to earth there's absolutely no fuel in this thing to make a brake pass and no heat shield for which to use the atmosphere to help it out to any degree, which is unfortunate, but uh, I don't know. We probably have many, many years to figure that out. I say, yeah, this it's, uh, apoapsis alone is uh, 2,600 days, so I don't imagine it's going to come back to Earth anytime this century, which is weird, but, you know, all right, whatever. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we'll come back to the spacecraft and get uh, a somewhat nice beauty shot. We don't really have any sunlight to speak of. Good job, little homie. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.